Once again, we're in the place to be. Welcome back to In the Black. Like the video. Help me grow the channel. And with that being said, let's jump right into it. I'm bullish on these dogs. If you ain't bullish, you need to slap yourself right now. So if you're bullish on the dogs token as well, you definitely want to know how to take advantage of the discount on the dogs tax, which begs the question, how long do I have to leave my dogs in the animal farm system before I can transact at the lowest possible tax, which is 6%? We're gonna answer that burning question, so let's get going. It's good to be prepared before the animal farm V2 opens up because it's coming soon. So let's find out how we can take advantage of the rules of the game. So first and foremost, what you need to know is that the dog's tax is a minimum of 6%, and a maximum of 90% tax on them dogs. It probably would be beneficial to know exactly what that tax is for, how you are taxed, when you are taxed. You are taxed on dogs only when you want to transact with another wallet, meaning you want to send your dogs from your wallet to another wallet. You'll be taxed on that transaction. If you sell dogs, yes, of course, you're going to be taxed. That is for sure. Transacting with a non-native staking contract. Well, what are non-native staking contracts? Well, those are the staking contracts that involve assets that are outside of the animal farm. Contracts that do not use or utilize the dogs token, the pigs token, or drip token. These are the native staking contracts. Dogs BUSD, Dogs WBNB, Drip BUSD, the Dogs Single Asset Staking Pool, and of course, the Pigpen. Those are your native staking platforms. Everything else involves outside coins and tokens. Those will earn you dogs. However, they will also charge you a tax. Let's just be real. 90% is absolutely nuts. So we want to avoid that at all costs. If you are a smart investor, you want to be taxed at as little rate as possible so you can safeguard your investment and your, the profit that you have made. So hopefully you're not being taxed. Hopefully you're not going to sell when you're being taxed at 90%, but there will be some who do, some who don't care, some who just have to get out of the animal farm and they're going to be taxed. That BNB that they will be taxed with is gonna go into two places. So two thirds of it is gonna go as BNB to the dog pound itself. That's the single staking asset pool. That's where you stack your dogs and earn BNB rewards in return for that. Two thirds of that tax just for staking dogs. Now the other third of that BNB is gonna be swapped for BUSD via pancake swap, and that's gonna be sent to the pig pen as rewards as well for those pig pen stakers. So that's pretty bullish for the pig pen stakers because you don't even have to even hold dogs token to get some rewards as well. Now we all know that I'm bullish on the pigs for sure. So that's even more reason to be bullish on the pigs, in my personal opinion, because that's more BUSD that's coming down the pipe just for holding the pigs' tokens. You don't even have to hold the dog's token. Now, let's look in a little bit deeper to see what an individual can do to decrease the amount of tax that they will be charged when interacting with the dog's token. So let's take a look at it you are going to be taxed to begin with 90 percent 90 percent taxed from day one when the animal farm opens everyone who cares about the drip ecosystem the animal farm specifically does not want tons of people dumping the dogs on the market on day one or day two or day three or day 15 or day 20. that does not help the ecosystem at all so this is a way to build value in the dogs and build demand for the dogs as well. Build in a reason to actually hold on to the dogs, not just because you quote unquote have to, because you don't have to hold on to the dogs. You don't have to. 
you can sell them day one, but you just will be charged a huge tax penalty. And that's perfectly fine. Some people will be okay with that. I am not one of them. So here's what we do in order to lower our tax burden. So first and foremost, there are two scores that one can achieve. You have a token loyalty score and you have a wallet score. The token loyalty score only applies to a specific amount of tokens that have been staked already in the DOG's single asset staking contract. So if you stake initially DOG's in your single asset staking contract, your single asset staking pool, otherwise known as the DOG pound, your token loyalty score is going to apply to those dogs. Now here's how it works. Let's say you stake 1,000 dogs in the dog pound. Your loyalty score is going to increase, which means that your tax burden is going to decrease over time. The token loyalty score reduces the tax on those particular dogs tokens by 0.75% every single day. So in order to decrease the tax burden on yourself for interacting with the DOGS token, you're going to have to leave them in the system for an extended period of time. And if you are an investor that's looking for value over a long period of time anyway, that should not be a burden upon you. Now those who are looking to get out as soon as they want, as, as soon as possible, well, then they're going to have to definitely be okay with incurring that fee or that tax when they decide to interact with the dog's tokens. So the second score is your wallet loyalty score. And this is a tax on all dogs transacted from a specific wallet for the life of the wallet. So if you have five different wallets, you're going to have to concentrate on building up your wallet loyalty score on each of those wallets. So definitely keep that in mind. Your wallet loyalty score only applies to one wallet at a time. Now the loyalty score builds up slowly over time, 2% monthly. So every single month you earn a 2% discount on the tax that you would otherwise be paying on the dog's token. Now the cool thing about the wallet loyalty score is that it is permanent. So once you reach a certain level, your tax burden is always going to be decreased by that particular amount. If you do the math, you'll see that it's going to take you 15 months to reach a maximum of 30% discount off of that initial 90%. So it'll take you 15 months of keeping those dogs in the system without just sending your dogs to another wallet, selling dogs, or transacting with a non-native staking contract. So if you do any of those things before the 15 months, well, you're going to get hit with a higher tax for sure. But those 15 months go by and you reach that maximum of 30% discount of your tax, then that 30% discount stays with you for the life of your wallet. Now again, if you have other wallets, you're going to have to do the same thing with those wallets. So now that we know the maximum amount that you can be discounted via your wallet loyalty score on your dog's tax, let's talk about the token loyalty score and how much you can reduce it by. The minimum tax is going to be 6%. Now if we're aiming for that 6%, we're going to have to combine our wallet loyalty score with our token loyalty score to get down to that 6% floor for our dog's token tax. In order to do that, your dogs would have to be staked in the single asset staking contract or the dog pound for 72 days. This 72 days would decrease your tax by an additional 54%, helping you to reach the magic number of 6% tax. So I can hear the haters already. They say, end up, man, why would I want to leave my dogs staked? my hard-earned money, my assets that I've worked hard for, why would I want to leave those on the platform, the animal farm, for 15 months until I can sell them? The developers of the Drip ecosystem, they don't play around. 
not only do they want there to be a safe place, a secure place to store your hard-earned money, but they also want to make it advantageous for every single investor who is long-term focused. Now, if that 15 months is too long for you, if those 72 days are too long for you, well, sorry about that. You're just going to have to wait a little bit. However, we can actually get on the fast track to reducing our tax burden by doing the following. So in the dog pound, you have a choice as to whether to do standard compounding or auto compounding. If you choose the auto compounding, you get rewarded in two ways. So here's how this works. The first way that you get rewarded is that the BNB that you earn from the single asset stake and pool is transformed into a dog's BNB LP token. And then it's stuck into the dog's BNB farm on your behalf. So you're able to essentially earn twice from your dog's token. You earn BNB and you also are able to earn the dog's BNB LP token. Now that's pretty awesome. The second way that you're rewarded is just for choosing the auto compounding option. You'll be rewarded with an increase in your token loyalty score at a faster rate of 1% per day instead of 0.75%. So how does this affect how long you have to wait? to get down to that 6%. Well, if you combine your wallet loyalty score and your token loyalty score and auto compounding, you'll be able to reach that magical 6% tax threshold in about three months. Now, those who don't look at the animal farm as a way to build wealth over a long period of time, they probably will be a little bit impatient and scared of this particular scenario. The fudders will come out for sure, but if those fudders want to sell, I am game for it because I'm just going to be collecting that BNB in the pig pen and in the dog pound. And now that you know all of this, if you're anything like me, you're definitely excited for this version two of the animal farm to open up because I can't wait to get this thing started. So there you have it. Don't forget to like the video. I hope this has been helpful to you. Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, stay smart and stay in the black. Thank you.